Hello, it's your favorite sports dunk here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the fastest growing community on YouTube. Remember, nightcap doesn't happen without you. So please subscribe or you're going to make Ocho cry. JR, the Grizzlies whip up on the Lakers, minus AD, 131 to 114. Early in the day, Chandler Parsons said when the Lakers lose, it's not going to be a 40-year-old man's fault. It's on Anthony Davis, not LeBron James's fault. We know uh, Chandler's had a lot of course things to say about LeBron over the course of the years. But you watch this game, you watch them play without AD. It was, it was, it was close. For a little while, and then the Grizzlies started raining threes, and then they pulled away from them. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected, though. They, I mean, for one, the Memphis is playing at home. Jaws back. It's, it's a lot of energy in the building. But, again, no AD, no Rui. Um, the bench has been really suspect coming from the Lakers side. So, it's, I mean, that's, that's to be expected. It's, it's a tough road game, especially earlier on in the, in the season. When you, you know, obviously when you're, you're on your number one A or one B guy is out, depending on what day it is. I mean, it's hard to call Bron anything other than one or one A. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, it's a tough situation. It's just a tough situation they ran into. And, uh, you know, Memphis is going to be, playing a lot better this year, obviously, because his job's back and the team is healthy. But, I mean, that's a tough team to beat and to go in and walk in. And Memphis is already a tough place to win in. Especially when they're playing at home. And we know they're at the grind house. We know how they got like to get up and down. The crowd get into the game. Ja high fly, his high fly, uh, his uh, high wire act. He's levitating through the air. He's playing unbelievable. Obviously, he has a lot to prove. He missed last year, had a lot of situations going on with him the previous year, and he wants to show, hey, a lot of guys stepped up in his absence. You saw Ant-Man. You saw a lot of these young players start to take steps forward in a place that he's supposed to have his foothold in by now. Yeah. He had to sit down, you know, some off-the-court the, off issues. You look at LeBron in 35 minutes. He was 15 to 24, 6 of 11 from three, seven rebounds, six assists, 39 points. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 4 12, 12 points. Austin Reed, 7 to 17, 19 points. Uh, Cam Reddish did finish strong with 15 points. But when I look at this, uh, 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 JR, I'm looking at the Lakers. I'm like, bro, y'all bitch was suspect last year. Y'all brought the same bitch back. Yeah. How do you expect to get better if your bitch was suspect last year? You made no improvement to it, and somehow you think, okay. Well, AD is going to be AD played good last year. Now he's playing all world. He's never played this good this early. Uh, averaging thirty two points, averaging twelve rebounds, giving you giving it to you on both ends. LeBron is doing what LeBron does. We know LeBron is going to average somewhere between twenty five and twenty seven points a game. At the end of the, and he's going to give you seven to eight rebounds, seven to eight assists. We know that. Okay, we're the consistent third guy. And then when those guys go to the bench, because LeBron can't play. 45 minutes a night like he could when he was young. Right. Where are the points going to come from, Swish? Who who can they count on, especially bench points? Who can they count on? Honestly, to me, I would like I would, if I and and if I know Bron, how I know Bron, I think he he's doing it now with uh, Cam Reddish. Like you got to mold that one guy who's going to be that bench firecracker. You like okay. one thing off the bench, you need a firecracker dude who's really like. And that's one one thing like I really loved about Malik Monk coming off the bench is because in yes. Sacramento because he this dude could come he can run pick a roll he can get above the rim he can shoot the three he can defend he can get you big stops he's yep. an energy guy he's gonna get the crowd into it so like when you got guys like that you got and, and that's the role that I fit into a lot of times in my career is like when you got guys like that you got to figure out a way to get them going early especially if they already feel like. All right, I'm coming off the bench. The guy's in front of me. He's not better than me, but this is what's best for the team. This is the role. This is the role. So in order for me to play my role, I'm gonna need you to feed me. Like I cool. I may not be, I may not be eating steak and caviar every night, but uh, <laughs> I need a little lobster here and there. You like, lobster crab yeah, legs and yeah. do what suffice in the meantime. For sure. For sure. And plus, he has to be able also now, a lot of times you're gonna start off. LeBron's probably going to be heading to the bench. So you'll be able to get your rhythm. Then when LeBron comes back in there, you're going to have to find a way to mesh with him and AD while 
while they're on the court also. Because yeah. we know those guys are going to get those shots. With AD's off the court, LeBron's off the court, obviously, your firecracker that's coming off the bench, he's going to be allowed to get his shots. But when they come back into the ball game, now you're going to have to find a way to seamlessly transition and blend in with those guys. Yeah, 100%. And for me, when I really think about that, it's a, it's a lot of kudos to Mike Woodson because when I was with the Knicks and I did end up winning six man of the year, he found a great package for myself and and, and Melo to play within when Melo comes off the court and I'm in there in a situation to where I can be aggressive and I can be as aggressive as I want. And then when he comes back, and like especially in the trenches when it's the third and fourth quarter, when it gets to that meat and potatoes of the situation, it's almost to, to where it's like, okay, he's the vocal point, but y'all still playing ping pong. Like you, you involved in back it, but forth. you like, yeah, you, it's a back and forth game. And then you got stat rolling on picks and pick and pops. Like and you, you in the situation to where now you got a, a cohesiveness rhythm with all your scores, which are key pieces. And for what T. Lou used to do with, with a lot with, with Kyrie and Kev, in the situation where Bron is going off or Kai is going off, he would find intricate plays for Kev to make Kev not only feel like he's a, a part, part of, of the team, but feel good about when he like he's involved to a situation to where he's not caught off guard to where you get a you might get a a certain situation where they jump the screen, he get a pick and pop situation where normally they're not gonna leave Kev for pick and pop. They're gonna hedge and try and get back to Kev immediately. But mm-hmm. you have those situations to where you know what. He ain't got a shot in four or five minutes. Let me just double team and see what happens. And but right. if you playing that, and you, if you're playing that way, you already have that cohesiveness within the group to where he, he not even tripping. He's gonna get it off regardless. I thought uh, I thought the Lakers got some really great looks tonight at three. The ball just didn't fall, and in the in the like the second, late in the second, and through the third quarter, I think what. Uh, what was it? The third quarter, they were like seven, six or seven or seven or eight from the three point line, JR. Yeah. yeah. And so, we, look, when a team get, catches fire like that, you either match them or they're going to pull away from you. For that, sure. Those are the only, there's your only, that's the only two options. You can't make enough twos when they're going seven of eight or eight or nine or whatever they went from, from the three point line in the fourth, in the third quarter. If you either match them shot for shot or whatever the lead is they had, I guarantee you it's going to be double digit. It's going to be 13, 14 points by the time you start the fourth quarter if you don't match that intensity from the three-point line. And I don't think the Lakers have great three-point shooting. I think they got streaky shooters. Yeah, LeBron yeah. is streaky. Uh, 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 Kobe of the Ozark, streaky. Austin Reeves, he's streaky. They don't have guys that you're like, oh, okay, they can just pull from here and it's yeah. good. I don't know. The kid, uh, Christian, what's his name? Uh, oh, Max Christie. Yeah, 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 he got a ratchet. I can't lie. He got a ratchet. He just don't get he's a lot of I find him and a lot of times he's starting the offense. So it's hard for him to get to catch that second swing rotation right. to be on, on the weak side. So right. but I think he got a cannon, though. Honestly, I just don't think he's in the, in that position a lot. But again, like for me, the hardest part about it is when you playing in this league and it's a three point shooting league right now. Like even I, I watched the the, uh, the Boston game. They shot 53 threes shoot 53 threes in the NBA game and it's only like 80, 90 possessions. Like that's a lot of, well, it used to be. Yeah, basically your, every possession, every other possession is a three. But it was a position. It was a point. I'm at the wine bar with my homie. I'm like, bro, this is the last eight possessions was all threes. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like, it, if you don't have, if you can't, Again, like you're saying, if you can't match that shooting, the team's going to pull away, especially yeah. if you can't create stops. So for me, a lot of those times, like, in especially over the last couple of years, I try to look at, like, the Lakers, like, what's your identity? Like, what's the identity right. of the team? Is it a scrappy team? Is it a, 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 a front-running team? Is you an underdog team? Like, what type of team are y'all? Because that that if you can under like underline that, because I knew like for sure for us in Cleveland, like we was an underdog team, but coming out of the third quarters, you I knew for sure coming out of the third quarters, the team was going to make a six to eight oh run coming out the doors. We just started yeah. off slow, and that's just the way it was. And no matter what it no matter how good we were at times, and it, that's just the way it is. But we was underdogs. So everybody in that system, in that situation, we already looked at it like, no, nah, we we're we already underneath, so we're going to come back anyway. 
But this team, I'm looking at it like, what's y'all, what's going to be the – like, right now, even the guys coming off the bench, who's that guy that was on another team that's coming to this team and be like, ooh, like a Lou Will or like a – even a Nick Young or like who's yeah. that guy coming off the bench and you're going to be like, hey, man, we got a game plan around him. Like, like watch out for this dude doing this. Like, there's nobody. Right. The Lakers really, not since Malik Monk, have they had a guy – that could come in and you know he can give you instant offense. Yes. Ha- they haven't had that guy, and they and, and most teams have a guy that can come in and you know he can let it go. Lakers don't have anybody. The Lakers bench haven't improved because that's pretty much the same players they had last year, and their bench was suspect. Yeah. So I don't understand what you thought was going to happen, even if AD's playing at a great uh, at a. At, his best level. LeBron is giving what LeBron does. Still, they can't play 48 minutes. So you're going to have to get – you need your bench to average, what, somewhere between 25 and 30 points, Swish? Yeah, all day long. Because you got to have your main guy anywhere from your, – your main bench guy, six-man guy, he's got to be anywhere from 12 to 15. Easy. Right. Like, and that's got to be any – like a given night, He, I need at least 12 to 15. I can't – how you going three – and, you know, because at this rate, you the third dude. Like, and it, like to me, it, it doesn't make sense because I was, I think D'Lo has the game. He has the caliber of game, like, to fit as the a third guy. But I don't understand. But what happens to him? Not, What's happened to him, Switch? What's going on with him? I don't know. I mean, I, it's, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, it's hard to play next to Bron. Is it? It is. It's hard to play. When you got, like, it's different when you go from a situation, like, and don't knock to him as a person or as a player, but, like, it's different when you go from a situation where you in Minnesota and nobody has any expectations. Right. And then you go from a situation to where you were back in the show. And you got you got those guys, and they just want to chip in the bubble. Like, granted, it was a couple of years ago, however you want to count it, discount it, whatever, a chip is a chip. So when you playing for the Lakers, for one, and you got Bron next to you, that's a lot of pressure. Because the expectations are both ends. You know what the Lakers represent, and you know every time LeBron touches the court, the expectation of him is to be to the finals because that's the standard that he's set. So, yeah. And that's what I tell people. It's easy. Hey, you playing when nobody gives a damn if you, if you win by 25 or you lose by 25 versus you going and the stadium is sold out road or home, it's a sellout. That's and the expectations of the, the, the great a lot of times switch, and I, this is what I tell people a lot of times, some of the greatest, the greatest killer of a player's career is expectations. Mm-hmm. Because not only the expectation that the player have for themselves is that the expectation that you have when you go to an organization and the expectations are to win. Yeah. And they don't accept, they don't accept excuses or, or why you didn't win. Mm-mm. They don't care. They just want you to win. And you in LA. L.A., Boston have a different standard because For they sure. are the gold standard. Same thing with the Warriors now. The Warriors have built, excuse me, the Warriors have built themselves into that model over the last decade. Yeah. But the, we know what the Celtics represent. We know what the mm-hmm. Lakers represent from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s. Even the, the Heat Lakers. were roused. Yes. You know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. You know when you're walking through this door what you're getting yourself into. Right. And so I, I can just imagine, um, and that's what I, playing with a great player, yeah, they make the game easier, but they put a lot of pressure on your ass. Yeah. Because they expect you to catch everything that they throw in your vicinity. They expect you to be where you're supposed to be. They don't want to hear nothing. John didn't want to hear nothing about no excuses. Uh, the guy got a good jam on me. I stumbled down. I slipped. He didn't want to hear none of that. Mm-mm. Because guess what? While you while you out there horse jacking around, the guy tried to hit me in the back of my head. So <laughs> that's the Take same thing LeBron. Yeah. LeBron's like, bro. I don't. I, I'm closer to the end than the beginning, and the expect. See, the problem is, is that as LeBron has gotten older, they don't compare LeBron to anything else but a younger LeBron. You and can't. see, the expect the expectations haven't changed for him. No, no. They expect LeBron because once he went to all those final swish, they expect that to be. That's the expectation every year, no matter who he's playing for, no matter who's playing around him. Right. A hundred percent. And and for, trust me, as a player, as you feel that, like I knew for sure when w- we was in the finals, was like this is your seventh in a row. This is your eighth in a row. It's your ninth in a row. Like, bro, how many, like, damn. And I got to, I got to make sure you win this joint. 
Because at the end of the day, yeah. like, regardless of the situation, like, when we won, don't get me wrong, we won, but when they start, when they show clips in 20 years, they're going to show my homie, like, this is, he came <laughs> home and they're going to show him and yeah. they're they going to show right. me over here like, yeah, but they ain't, like, <laughs> it ain't about me, dog. This is, this is like, this, I knew that going in, like, this is bigger than me. So, like, for, for the situation, it's like, I, I look at it very very different now um and i hope like i i wish i could talk to somebody like a cam reddish because like bro you got an opportunity to really especially when they playing people like this dog like bro you if you could come off the bench and go out there and like just average 15 to 16 off the bench be consistent with it take your shots if they don't go in they don't go in but you got to take those same shots next game yeah that's the biggest problem I think with the Lakers right now is like when you see dudes miss, you they feel that monkey on their jacket and they're like, ah, let me pump fake one dribble, two dribble, probe, kick it out. Like, nah, bro, if I'm open, I'm open. I'm shooting that. Ain't right. nobody telling me different. But you got to have confidence when you, when you shoot it. Man, I can't take this anymore. Doc, you gotta help me. Man, this stupid meme is ruining my life. Now I know just what you need. Alipop. Ridge Rush has got fiber, natural energy. It'll pick you right up. Oh, okay. Oh, now that's a rush. Smile for the camera. Oh, Joe. Here you go, internet. Earlier today, Chandler Parsons said when the Lakers lose, it's gonna be 40, it's not, it's not gonna be 40-year-old man's fault. It's Anthony Davis, not LeBron James. It's on Anthony Davis, not LeBron. What what do you what do you make of that? For me, it's just availability, Anthony Davis, over the course of the years. I think people are getting fed up with AD and being uh, him being available, especially at his age, and um, and then seeing a person like LeBron at his age and being always available. But at the mm-hmm. people don't, I, I think one thing the people don't understand about, you know, s- special specimens. Like I look at like Bron, <laughs> you, Ocho, <laughs> like y'all are like, y'all are different specimens than everybody else. Like I got a homeboy, like we used to, we play together in Denver and we live down the street from each other. We walk, we work out, we do all of that. I can still go to Burger King after that. I could go to McDonald's after that. He got to go get a salad. That's <laughs> is just going to transform different. But it, right. within that, with respect to AD, his body ain't built for this. No, not and not 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 in the sense of being available the way other people needs him to be available. His mm-hmm. body is built for what he's doing right now. Listen, bro, you got to sit down. You got to sit down. And same with Joel and B. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand, like, some of the older guys, you know, a Charles Barkley or a Patrick Ewan dudes who play 82 games every game. And, right. And was those guys in that time. But at the same time, you not we're not working with that. We're right. not working with the same steel, titanium. Like, it's a different, it's a totally different metal. Yeah. Everything's different now, Swish. You look at the baseball players, the ba- the pitchers don't pitch as often as they once did. Uh, they got they got a, a, a guy go three or four innings because they don't want the guy to see the guy the uh, the, pit- the batters to see the the third time through the lineup. So you got middle relief. You got you know you got a, a lefty lefty matchup. You got righty righty matchup. You got middle yeah. relief. You got a setup man, and then you got a closer. Mm-hmm. So the pl- baseball players used to you know uh, uh, the pitchers used to pitch every fifth day. That ain't yeah. the case now. Well, to me, that's that's way that's more strategic. That's but that's that's not necessarily availability. Or you guys, or you guys, it was it was thought of as a badge of honor for you to play eighty two games. 100%. Guys don't give a damn about no eighty two games now. Sweet. No, 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 no. <laughs> they ain't thinking about that. They don't care about that at all. When at we played, all. I mean, defensive lineman, it wasn't no. Oh, you playing fifty snaps, and then somebody's gonna play thirty. You played, you played until you couldn't go anymore, and then you came out when you got tired. It wasn't no. Okay, today. 
you're gonna play 40, you're gonna play 40 of the 65 plays, or you go no, you're gonna play until you get tired. So if we ran 70 plays, basically you're gonna be out there 60 of them. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, but, like load management and all that. We didn't know nothing about that till Pop started doing that with Tim and them, and, and that was still like and that was like 2010, 2000, like 11, somewhere in that, or somewhere in that range. And it was like, bro, like we don't like I when I came in in 04, you play, you try to play 82 games and yes. you try to play 38, 40 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding? Like low management? What you mean? I don't care if it's the worst team. I'm trying to go get 35 on the worst team. I'm trying <laughs> to go get 35 on the best team. It's just right. that's the competitive juice that you put. You like, I grew up. Couldn't wait to get to this level. I couldn't. Right. I didn't. I dreamt about this forever to go sit down and nothing is wrong with me, or just be like, "Oh, nah, you gotta, you know, you play thirty five minutes a night, so you gotta chill tonight, and then the day after tomorrow, you can go back out and play thirty five. Like I don't, I can't even fathomly think of that in a game. Like there's no way I gotta play today, tomorrow, take a day off. The next day we playing like that's we we playing. Oh, Joe, you got us? Yeah, you can hear me? There yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up, baby? I just I just I just landed. I, I landed, came straight to the hotel and got here as fast as I could, baby. JR, what's up, boy? Hey, no, what's happening, man? Now, throw something on the floor for me, baby. I'm gonna pick it up now. Let's see. We got you. We've been waiting on you. Uh KD had high praise for Ja today, saying he's the most athletic person I've seen. Switch, do you agree? Do you agree? Is Ja the math most athletic player that you've seen? Mm. Basketball player? Yeah. No. No. You like Russ? You like D Rose? The most athletic. I, I mean, D Rose in his heyday. Oh my God. But yes. to me, honestly, the most athletic, I gotta go Russ, bro. At six five, long arms, wiry, strength, athletic, like explosiveness, intensity. I gotta go Russ. Man, having having I I never saw Russ at his prime in his prime. I only saw Russ a couple of years ago with the Lakers, Ooh. and but I saw Jaw, and I've seen Jaw on several occasions. The way that and he a thin, but if you look at his waistline, he got his legs really don't match his body because he's really thin frame up top. But he got he got some legs on him. Man. He built he he built kind of like a wide receiver Ocho, you know, he's yeah, not yeah. he's not wiry. He got right. he got some size to it from from waist down. And right. the way he can elevate and hang mm-hmm. in the air and contort his body? Yeah. Who we I I haven't had I haven't had the, the pleasure the opportunity to watch y'all up close uh I, I did see D Rose up close. I've seen Russell Westbrook up close, but watching from TV, obviously TV does does you really does give you no really no justice until you see a player of that magnitude right. play up close. But it, it is explosive, and John Morant looks from TV. I can imagine it looks that much more explosive in person. So yes. at, at some point, at some point, I got to watch him play in person. Yes, but when when it comes to players that are very explosive, that that's that's the top three right there. D Rose. Yeah. Obviously, um, Russ. Russ yeah, John. Russell Westbrook. I'm trying to think who else played with that 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 intensity. They play like they're angry. It remind me of Steve Smith. You, mean, yeah. you know how Steve Smith? Steve yeah, Smith Smitty. Yeah. Game? Oh yeah. Like they yeah. somebody yeah. did something to him, but who right. pissed you off? He did. They just play the game angry as hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ru- uh, 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 D Rose with that at was that that point guard that could. You don't normally switch. You know this. You don't normally have point guards that play above the rim. Nah. Russ played above the rim. Uh, mm-hmm. Ja plays above the rim. D yeah. Rose could play above the rim. Most right. of the time, the point guard they play below the rim. Yeah. Now Kevin Johnson was unique because Kevin Johnson could play above the rim. BD. But <laughs> so it was. It was a. Uh, it, it's a rarity when you see it. But Ja consistently is a. In I mean, he have. He's one of those guys, and those guys do do, do a lot of damage in the paint. Because if you yeah. look at Ja at the end of the year, you look at Russ when he was in his prime, you look at uh, D. Rose in his prime, look at the point paint. So you have to be a guy to elevate in order to be able to get your shot off over those trees. Mm-hmm. Because if you, it, you know, John Stockton wasn't playing in the paint. 
Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, J. King guys, those guys like that, they weren't playing in the paint. Tony now, Magic Parker, was though. different, but Magic was 6'9". Tony Parker was the only one. Tony, Tony Parker, Parker was yeah, the only one. he was the only ground based point guard that lived yep. in the paint. Lived in he the was, paint. Oh, we couldn't stop it. That shit used to <laughs> piss me off so bad, dog. And they kept your ass in the pick and roll. Oh, my God. <laughs> You got him and Tim in the pick and roll. Then you got the other big... Uh, Manu and pick- Tim in the pick oh, and roll. Oh, my God. The pick and roll, dribble drive, dribble handoff. I'm like, damn. Do y'all run any other offense other than pick and roll? Floater. Dribble out. Come back. Oh, Scott, you lay up. Oh, my God. That should give me nightmares, man. Pop used to kill us. <laughs> 